got a Shibu. A Sh I keep on doing that all the time. A Shibo Rojas with the Chatham News and Record. And I've got Coach Barry. A lot of you folks know Coach Barry. So he's here. We're going to have an hour long discussion. You can see up on the screen what we're going to be talking about. We're taking a look at all the Chatham County High School teams that will be playing this season. That includes Northwood, Seaforth, Chatham Central, uh, JM, Chatham Charter, and Woods Charter, a char Woods Charter School. As you can see, general discussion on the season, we'll talk about power rankings. That's something new that Shibo is introduced this year. And then we'll take an in-depth look at each team in order of the power rankings and talk about this. This should go for about an hour. If we run over a little bit, we will give you a heads up. But that's where we are. So let's get this down, this back screen down. And there you go. Here's Mr. Shibo. And there's Coach Barry right over there. And if you haven't picked up your issue of the Chatham News and Record, that's what you need to do. It's out. And that's got uh, Shibo's rankings ratings and pre um preseason stories in it and the other thing too is you had a media day over at northwood so why don't you well it's your show so why don't you start it off yeah so we did a media day last saturday at northwood we had all the county teams there for well just the ones in the mid-carolina 1a 2a so that's your northwood c4 uh jordan matthews and chatham central coach barry um, you know, this season, all four of those teams are in the same conference this year, so that's new. Um, talking to those teams, they're really excited to play each other, especially Northwood. Everybody gets a shot at Northwood this year. So with that, with everybody playing in the same conference, and, of course, Woods Charter and Chatham Charter playing in their conference as well, just, you know, how do you how do you envision this season going just off of that, you know, with teams playing each other in Chatham County? I think there's excitement in the air. I think when you look at the four um, Chatham County schools in the same uh, conference, particularly Northwood, Seaforth, Jordan Matthews, and Chatham Central, there's a, a vibrancy in the air, and everyone is looking forward to all of the teams playing each other, sort of like a backyard brawl type situation. Uh, I can envision uh, when these games take place, the gym is going to be packed, there's going to be excitement, and it's going to be a visceral um response to uh, the competition that's going to be in play and ultimately i'm looking forward to it there's some specific matchups i'm looking forward to there's some specific players that i'm looking to really look at uh that's all within this chatham county area and i think Oshibo, uh this year is going to be absolutely fantastic you know just do off the charts through the roof yeah and you say interesting matchups and now we, we want to see the northwood and seaport uh rivalry twice a year now uh this year they play first on january 2nd and then we also got uh, Northwood has another really big matchup against Myers Park uh, later that month on the 13th. So just, you know, what, what are you most excited about those matchups there, especially the Northwood and Seaforth one? Well, uh, first off, um, I'm very familiar with Northwood. Uh, I've had many, 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 many kids play for that Northwood program over the years. And um, as you already know, I've been affiliated with Seaford over the last couple of years. Uh, first year, first couple of years as Director of Basketball Skill Development, also coached the JV program over the last couple of years. And even this year, I'm actually uh, affiliated with the girls program as one of the assistants as well as an advisor for the program. Uh, that Seaforth Northwood game in particular, both girls and boys, is going to be just off the charts because they pull it from the same exact point. It's almost like there's a line, and whoever lives on this side of the line goes to see for who is on this side of the line goes to Northwood. They all know each other. They all have played against each other through rec recreational basketball. They play with, with, uh, against each other through uh, middle school as well. So they all know each other. Uh, they see each other at the pizza parlor. They see each other you know, at the stores all over the place. And uh, each person's kind of talking about, yeah, what we're going to do to you, this, that, and the other. So I think when those two teams play, it's going to be absolutely bonkers. The specific thing that I'm looking for uh, with the girls is I know when Northwood played the girls, um, uh, when, when, it, when, when the Northwood girls played Seaforth a couple of years ago, uh, Seaforth was very, very young. They had predominantly ninth graders, and this was the year that Northwood won the championship, and they pretty much had their way with Seaforth. Seaforth put in a valiant effort, but Northwood was just too tough for them. Well, deja vu. That same group of players who played two years ago, they're now two years older now in that junior and senior year, and they have an opportunity to avenge 
a loss that um, you know that that they had to take uh, those years ago. So I know they're looking forward to playing Northwood from that perspective. And on the flip side, the Northwood girls they're looking forward to con- just just playing Seaford and continue with business as usual. They feel like hey, you know, nothing's changed when we play them. Uh, let's see what happens. But if all things go the way they expect it to go, it's going to be a similar result as it was two years ago. Now, in the case of the boys, um, you know, listen, I think anybody who's been paying attention understands that Northwood is a serious, serious contender, a serious team. This is a team that's been to the state championship uh, game two times in the last few years, uh, made the semifinal year before last. Uh, they led by the great Drake Powell. Uh, he's doing some big time things. Um, you know, USA basketball team rated in the top five in the country. Uh, you have guys like Jake Layton, Cam Fowler. You got um, Whitaker. You got all these guys. They're loaded. And so I think they're looking forward to playing just because they're in their backyard and they want to have bragging rights that, you know what, between us two, between us and our own backyard, we believe we're better and we're looking to prove it. On the safer side, you know, they're looking to play Northwood, and their main mission is not only do they want to play them, they want it to be a competitive game, and they want to put their best foot forward, and they want to see where the chips fall. So I think just in general, Northwood and uh, Seaford, get your tickets early. It's going to be sold out. It's going to be packed. Everybody's not going to be able to get in the gym. There's going to be multiple police cars, policemen. It's going to be absolutely bonkers. Make sure you get that ticket. January the 2nd, it's going to be a, a four, four teams playing. Both JV teams, both varsity teams at Northwood during uh, the Christmas break. I can't wait. Coach, are you getting like a percentage off of the sales for this thing? He's like, oh, you got to get your tickets early, man. It's gonna be, hey, um, on Saturdays, um, media hour what did you get the sense from both both the teams as to you know the fact that they are all in the same conference and playing up against each other because i think coach and you both hit on the fact that this is unique this year because you've got four chatham county schools in the same conference and they're going to play against each other whether they're developmentally ready or not (laughs) yeah it's almost like the feeling of a lot of teams some teams didn't say it but some did come out and say it like we want a shot at northwood you know a lot of teams which team which team um, I think I I want to say it was I think C four some of the C four players they were they were saying they were excited to see, uh, play Northwood I think Cooper John said that um, also too I, I, it was funny because PJ was trying to get uh, Jordan Matthews to say it but they 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 weren't biting but I think a lot of teams would be uh, really excited to get a chance to play Drake Powell uh, see what he can do against them as well and then um, unfortunately you know we won't have the Jeremy Stevenson Drake Powell matchup uh, this yeah. year yeah. but. Um, First of all, congratulations to Drake Powell for signing the UNC yesterday. Uh, big props to him, and um, I'm sure he'll do very well next year in, in Carolina with Coach Davis. But I want to get into some of the other players. You know, you talked about uh, the players at Northwood, Cam Fowler, uh, Fred, Dare, Drake. But what, who else are you seeing that might emerge this season from C4, Chatham Central, Jordan Matthews? You know, who, who are those guys you think will step up this year? Well, uh, Cooper, Cooper over at uh, C4, he is a – he, he's a baller. He's very, very competitive. He's physical. He plays with a free willing spirit where uh, it's contagious. In fact, I thought he was a major, major factor last year in uh, Seaford's run of being uh, the regular season conference champions. I think Noah Lewis is another guy that um, I think, you know, if you don't know who Noah Lewis is, uh, when, 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 when he's on his game, he's going to be one of the better players in the entire league. And I fully expect him as well as Cooper potentially make all conference honors. So you got to keep an eye on them. I think when you look at Chatham Central, uh, they have some guards that are really, really, really good. They push the ball, they play a fast pace, they're extremely competitive. They have, they have, they, they, they got they got jump shots, they can also you know, take it to the hole, go really hard. Uh, I think that's gonna be a fascinating team. And I personally believe that's one of the teams that's gonna be a sleeper. You gotta keep your eye on them. They're going to surprise some people when they play them because they 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 their experience. This is probably six, seven years that some of these players have been playing with each other. Now they're going into their senior year, and I think they have big things uh you know in mind. If you look at Jordan Matthews, this is another team that you know what, man, I'm not saying they're gonna win the conference, right? But this is a team that I'm hearing through the grapevine, you have to be really, really careful with. 
They have a kid coming over from Chatham, uh, from Chatham Charter, the tall kid, number 42, uh, that I know he's on that team. He was all world, you know, in that run that they had over the last two years, as well as they had a, they got a freshman in there that's really, really good. And then when you look at Coach Wiley, I know him personally. He's a great coach that has always gotten the maximum out of his players, regardless whether the skill level was here or there. So I think you got to watch those guys. I think they can be tricky. They can definitely surprise a couple of people. They won't surprise me because I'm aware of them. But, but that's the team you got to watch. But Chatham Central is um, the team that's the dark horse. You really got to keep your eye on them. I think when you look at Northwood, uh, I think that second tier, you you know, it's, I think auction is going to come down to that Chatham Central and uh, Seaforth. And uh, just, just just be careful because remember, they beat Seaforth last year when we had Jaron Stevenson, and they have the same exact crew. And this is a team that's coming back very, very experienced, very, very confident. Uh, the consistency of that coach, Coach Burke, who's been there for umpteen years, so everybody knows him. He's a gritty, you know, hard-nosed, physical, fast type coach. Um, so I think now it's going to be absolutely, you know, fantastic to see this whole thing, you know, play out. Now Chatham Central's um, they're probably one of the shorter teams in the in the conference, aren't they? So they make up for it by by playing playing play hard, fast. That was play fast game. with that speed. Was mm -hmm. I mean, when they played uh, Seaford last year, their basic plan was. The minute someone shoots the ball, they're going to get it and they're going to push up the ball as quick as possible. You can have a wall in front of them. They're going to try to run around the wall and throw the ball over the wall just to push the ball to get some quick opportunities. Because what they don't want is for a team to set their defense and force them to shoot over them. They want to beat you to the cup. They want to push you. They want to essentially tire you out, gas you out. So by the time you get to the fourth quarter, you have no legs. They've been conditioned. Uh, like no one else over the last three, four months. That's their thing. They want your tongue to hang out. Always remind me of Loyola, Merrimont, with Paul Westhead, where they want your tongue to hang out by the time you get to the fourth quarter. You just don't have anything in the tank just to stay with them, and they run by you, make a layup after layup. I'll have to look for that one. I'm taking pictures of guys with their tongues hanging out. <laughs> uh, JM, on Saturday, their coach mentioned they had several injuries last year, and I think all those guys are coming back this year. Yes. Yeah, their guys are coming back. So like yeah, like Coach Barry said, they're they're bringing back the transfer too, and they're going to be you know looking to have a better season than last year, like you said, and I think they'll they they will for sure be better than last year. I think. So um, also, I want to get into power rankings. So preseason power rankings. If you haven't already seen it in the paper, um, I'm introducing it this year and just ranking all the Chatham County teams, uh, regardless of conference and all that. We're just going to kind of create like a debate kind of thing. <laughs> With, with Chatham County basketball this year. So, He's asking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, so please, uh, please give us feedback on our, on our power rankings. Um, it, it's going to be based on uh, weekly performances, um, records, strength and schedule, things like that, um, keeping an eye on those types of things. So let's get into it. So preseason power rankings for me. At number one, I got, of course, Northwood. Um, you know, we, we already know what, what they're working with over there. Number two, I got Chatham Charter. Um, really strong program, too, as well. Number three, I have Seaford. Uh, number four, Chatham Central. Number five, Jordan Matthews. And six, Woods Charter. Now, Coach Barry, me and you, we already started talking about this a little bit before we started. So mm -hmm. give me your feedback on, on the power rankings there. Well, here's what I'll say. Uh, first and foremost, I have to you know, give full disclosure. I'm still affiliated <laughs> with uh, Seaford uh, High School, the basketball program. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I'm a little partial to them, both the boys and the girls. So what I'll say is this, uh, I'm going to go through these power rankings and uh, I'll tell you what I think about your scenario and uh, we'll take it from there. So okay. you're going to skip over uh, Ashibo saying that uh, Seaforth's number three in the boys. Uh, well, I might comment on it a little okay, bit. Okay, all right. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk a little bit. <laughs> all right. uh, Northwood, I think anybody who's been paying attention it's obvious that Northwood has got to be favored to be the top. Again, led by the great, great Powell. You have uh, Whitaker, you have I mean, Graves, you have Ken Fowler, you have Jake Layton, you've got Griffin Hobbs. I mean, these guys are just loaded. They have the experience. I think they coached by one of the best coaches, uh, you know, not just the county, but you know, maybe even the state. Um, it's obvious. Just look at the man's record. Matt Brown's also a great coach. Uh, number. Uh, hey, hey, before you go on to the next one, let me, let me just interrupt. 
we keep on mentioning Drake Powell. We were at the signing yesterday. You were at the signing yesterday. But Northwood, Drake Powell is an important component, but that team playing together for as long as they have, I think that's the difference maker. What, what, what are your thoughts on that, Ashibo? Yeah, they're, they're a really deep team, and they got size. They got athleticism and, and, and really good young guys. Like you said, Cam Fowler, who I've been watching in football. He's a great athlete on both sides of the ball. I haven't seen him play basketball yet, but from what I'm hearing, you know, he's um, really strong for them there, even as a sophomore. Isaiah Blair as well, who's also a football guy, but he's tall, and I've seen I've seen what he's done over the offseason, you know, working on his uh, ball handling, shot making, and, and, and play making. So I think they have a really deep team, like Gene said, and if you want to, like, tell me, tell me more about those guys that you that you've seen and what they can bring to Northwood. Well, uh, we get back to what Gene had alluded to. It's definitely the team mm -hmm. because you can take a guy like Drake Powell, put him with a, a, a team that doesn't play like a team that's not well coached. They're not going to do well at all. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that they play well as a team has a lot to do with the coach, the culture that's been set by this program going back the last seven, eight years, however long he's been actually coaching, and I think. Because he's established this, when the new players come in, they just all fall in line and they understand there's a certain standard, there's a certain culture that we all have to play with. And by playing that way, and you add great players to the mix, then you have the results, you know, that you actually have. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, some of the other players, uh, Whitaker, I mean, his dad in particular is a coach, a great coach, a great skill development person. Uh, his son is not the only great player you know his he has daughters his uh, natalia you know, yeah and it's funny i'm, I'm going to interrupt again and the, the funny thing about natalia is she says she can kick fred's butt when it comes to playing <laughs> basketball <laughs> well listen i wouldn't i wouldn't put it past her but i mean you 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 have him uh the kid i mean he's he's a solid 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 point guard his iq is through the roof he knows how to use his body he has a jumper. He can drive the rim. He has, and he understands the moment. You know, in fact, in my personal opinion, if he didn't get hurt last year, I think it's a very high probability that Northwood would have won the entire thing. Not taking anything away from anybody else, but you take that component out, the one-two punch, um, it, it's, it's a big blow. We know next man up, but yet and still, I thought he was that important of a factor. Uh, you also have, I love Griffin Hobbs. I think, I think what makes Griffin Hobbs special is he's the consummate team player. He takes it, he understands his role, he'll hit the J, he'll handle the ball when he needs to. Whatever the team needs, that's what he does. You look at a guy like Jake Layton. He's a guy that I've been working with since he was like this small. He's come to many, many, many of our youth hoops camps. In fact, the crazy thing about Jake Layton, he was in uh, my, one, my, one of my programs and our VIP uh, thing. And what ended up happening was COVID kicked in and they kind of canceled it. And that was the last thing that he was in. But Jake Layton, the biggest thing about Jake Layton is he's extremely competitive. He comes from a competitive family. I know his dad personally. And uh, by, when, by him getting to Northwood, he's following along with that mentality of, uh, of doing what he does. And I can go on and on and on about this group. But at the end of the day, it goes back to what Gene said, the chemistry uh, that was implemented or, 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 or enforced by the coaching staff and having the players buy in has everything to do with a big part of the success. And then you add a Drake Powell and some of the other players that I mentioned, now you have something special and that's what he's been doing. And so super proud of that group. And listen, um, I want all of the Chatham County schools, you know, to do well. I'm partial to C4 and to be honest with you, I love Northwood as well because I know just so many people across both sides. I'm going to interrupt again. Uh, Coach, you, may, you make a good point. You and I have been in this county for a while, and we've seen these guys play since they were in rec league. Mm -hmm. And it's nice, and I, I love the fact that they're all in the same conference this year because mm -hmm. they they played against each other or they played with each other mm -hmm. in rec ball or any other, other camps that are out there. So that's a great opportunity. Um, Chatham Charter is next. That's number two yeah. for you. Are you okay with Chatham Charter number two? Yeah, I love Chatham Charter. I think another great coach in the uh, in the county, if not the state, is Coach Jason Messier. I've known him a very, very long time. When I coached back at Woods Charter, probably in the early 2010, 2011, I first coached up against him. And even before he had all of the players, uh, he's another guy similar to Coach Brown 
He has systems, processes, emphasize chemistry, play strong defense, play together, guys, play their role. And what he's been able to do over the last 10 years is develop a great, great program. And this is why his team's winning. So I absolutely have no problem with your number uh, two pick as well, just based off the body of work. Yeah, and they were returning some of those players from last year. They had a deep playoff run. And mm-hmm. he also said they're bringing a lot of players back. And we already mentioned one of their players going to Jordan Matthews. So, and um, I was talking to Coach Messier a little bit, and he told me the expectations of these young men, they're the same. You know, mm-hmm. they're going to expect them to come in and build on the success of last year and continue to be successful. So, do you feel like, you know, even with a, a little bit of a new roster, you think Coach can, can get them in the same spot? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, just – the greatness of what he has exhibited over the last you know 10 years mm-hmm. using different players and constantly being competitive over those years i don't think anything is going to change in fact if you look at his uh schedule he's already played three games and he's three and oh and he's, yeah. three and he's following the same blueprint he practices hard he gets his guys a lot of reps as far as games so by the time the games start really counting they have so much experience under their belt and the chemistry starts being developed that you know that team just keep rolling. So now I don't think they're gonna have a problem whatsoever. The other reason why, and I would agree with putting them in that second spot is because they played C4 last year and they played them the year before that. And in both instances, they were able to edge uh C for uh if I win in that game. Mm-hmm. Similar to what Northwood did two years ago, not last year, but two years ago. So you have to kind of favor them over them just based off of you know past body of work. And everybody hates the first preseason <laughs> power ranking or poll, but that's okay. That's why we're having this discussion, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's why the Sheba is bringing this up. Uh, C4, why do you pick C4 third? Yeah, C4 third. Um, I know we talked about them losing Jaron Stevenson, but talking to those guys, they seem like they're really focused on proving that they can do it without them this year. They also have a new coach, and Coach Brunelli, who uh, we know he's had success uh, at other programs here in North Carolina as well. So I think with, with, with a new coach – um, a new kind of focus for them this season. I, I have a feeling that they could they could make some noise this year in the conference and in Chatham County, and and of course compete with Northwood and, and the team likes of that those teams. So, you know, what, what do you see from C four, especially since you're being there with those guys and, and Coach Brunelli, um over there? What what are you seeing from them, and are do you think they can really you know be successful this year? You know, one hundred percent. I am one hundred percent rooting for uh, Seaford and that success. The new coaching staff, uh, I know every player on the team, and it is my hope that um, they come in with that same energy and that vigor, and they put their best foot forward. And listen, if they can come in number one, let's do it, right? Go for it. Be the best you can be. Uh, We just have to see how this thing plays out. But from my vantage point, I clearly want uh, Seaforth to be the best they can be, maximize their potential, and if we can become number one, great, let's go do it. But if I base it off of uh, the past, uh, I want these guys to don't take anything for granted. Don't take anything for granted. Uh, put the extra work in, do all the necessary things that championship teams don't do. And at which point, you know, we'll see where, we'll see where things fall. But my hope is for Seaford to prosper and be the best they can be. How many JV players moved up this year, Dino? You know? Yes. Um, there's um, – uh, uh, Braxton Braxton Little was one guy that came up. Okay. You also have a guy named Campbell Meadow, Me- uh, Metter. He's actually the guy that's kind of on the fence where he goes back and forth, plays both teams, and there's another kid named Ty uh, Willoughby. You know, so those three, but Ty Willoughby and Campbell uh, Metter, they're, they're basically rooted with JV, but they will come up to the varsity. The only guy that's, that's come up has been Braxton Little. And there's another guy named Nate who came up from Sanford, live body, um, he came down to the school in Sanford. He played down in Sanford and he came up. Uh, he's um, he's a similar body type, similar style. It's like a Cooper, a lot of body, physical, you know, has that grit, rebound, not afraid of anything. So he's going to be a great addition as well. So in general, the team is essentially the same except for uh, two players. Um, you have uh, Braxton Little and you have the other kid, other kid named Nate. I don't know his last name, but his name is Nate. So now I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Can't wait to uh, uh, they suit up, play against some other groups, and hopefully, you know, they have all the success in the world. Right, and we talked about Cooper as well, but what about Tyshawn Davenport? You know, he came to the media day as well. Um, I think Coach Manila sees him as one of those guys that should step up for them this season as a leader. Um, and he's one of those seniors, right, that started at, uh, with the program in the first open. So what are you seeing from him in the, in the preseason? 
I love Tyshawn Davenport. I think that um, he's a guy that's extremely uh, competitive. He's very crafty on defense. If you're not careful, he'll pick your pocket, almost like an Allen Iverson kind of thing. He's real quick with his hands. He runs the floor real well. Uh, he knows how to use his body, contort his body, and still finish those tough layups. The other thing that he'll do if you're not careful is if you leave him open for a three, he'll knock that three down for you as well. I've seen him do this for the last two years. The other guy that's legit is Noah. Uh, Noah Lewis, he's uh, he's real physical. Uh, he's smart. Um, he has a certain swag about himself. And he can go as far as he wants to go as far as um, as, as far as his success as a basketball player. And uh, I'm looking forward to big things from him as well, point guard. Um, you have another guy named Lachlan Haddix. I love Lachlan Haddix. He's the closest thing uh, on that team to a defensive-minded, hard-nosed guy that don't take any prisoners. He kind of gives you that muscle, that toughness inside. Uh, rebounding defense, he's smart, got IQ. Um, I expect a great year out of him. And then, obviously, um, there's a few other guys. What's the, I'm missing somebody. So we have uh, Noah, we have Tashan, we have uh, Cooper, we have Lachlan. Oh, yeah, you have Lamar. So Lamar is another interesting person because – um, I think Lamar is another guy that, you know, once he finds his footing, he could be something to be reckoned with. When you look at Lamar, he's, he's very athletic. He's towering, tomahawk dunks, got jumpers. He just loves the game. Gym rat, always in the gym. You know, wants to, um, you know, wants to, you know, do well for the team. Has aspirations to play even at, at the next level. Just, just a good quality player that moving into this particular year, he's going to get his opportunity to show what he's all about because Coach uh, Coach Brunella is going to certainly give that to him. And then uh, we Shadow got Central, Shadow Central uh, in the next spot at number four. Uh, and, Coach, you talked about this a little bit. You know, you're, you're really high on Shadow Central because, like you said, they returned a lot of players that's played together for a long time. They're a fast-paced team. Uh, they got guys that they brought to media today, Devontae Johnson as a guard and Reed Albright. Um, and those guys talked to me. You know, like they said, they're not going to be the biggest, but like you said, they're going to run the floor. They're going to make uh, opponents tired. They're going to they're going to push out and transition. So, tell me, what what is what's the biggest thing you really like about Shadow Central, and and where do you see them uh, shaking out this season? I think everything starts with that coach, Coach Burke. I've known him for years. I mean, going back to my Woods Charter days, I coached against him multiple times, and I know his style. I know what he does. He's a gritty guy. He's going to get these guys playing together. They're going to take charge. They're going to play defense. They're going to play fast. They're going to be in your face. They're going to make you fight, period. And the, their method of making you fight is being physical, being in shape, and running the ball. So everything starts there. Once you get past that, then you start looking at the players. Those players, he has skilled players. They may not be the tallest, but they're skilled players. And they have bought into what Coach Burke has to say. So when you have a coach who's well-established, has his systems in place, knows what he wants, he's been working with these players for the last three, four years, they have skill, they bought into a system, this is a team that you cannot you cannot overlook because I think they're going to come at you. They, they, they're going to force you to fight. So I think this is a team that um, if you don't come in there ready to play them with and take them with the level of series that you need to, they can surprise some people. So this is another team that I'm looking forward to uh, seeing play, especially against a team like C4. I, I think they again, won against C4 last year, didn't they? Yes, yes. It, we, C4 beat in the first game, uh, but in the second game at Chatham Central uh, with Jaron Stevenson, they actually edged us out. I think it was an overtime game, if I'm not mistaken. They edged us out, and um, it was one of the biggest wins they had. In fact, I remember at the end of the game, they stormed the floor. I saw Gene Gala come on with the camera. <laughs> You know, we, I interviewed the coach. It was just a very, very um, good feeling for that particular group. And I believe that based off of that win, based off of that success they've had with, you know, with uh, younger players, I think they'll come into this year believing they can do some damage. All right. And then next in line, we got Jordan Matthews. You know, we talked about – we just talked a little bit about Coach Wiley and his program and what he's been doing there for the past couple of years. So – what are you liking to see out of Jordan Matthews this year? I know, um, they're, they're, like we said, they get, they're getting a transfer in from Chatham Central. That will really help them um, on the floor this year. So what's, what's the feelings on Jordan Chatham Matthews? Central, Chatham Charter. I mean, Chatham Charter. Chatham Charter, that's what I'm going to say. That's what Chatham Charter. 
We're talking about Chad. No, we're talking, we're talking about Jordan Matthews. Jordan Matthews. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. But they got that kid coming in from yes, Chad yes, Chad and Chad. Yeah. Well, again, everything starts with the coach. I think the coach is a great man. Coach Wiley, I've got a chance to talk with him several times. Um, and I just like his philosophy. I like his value system. I know he knows I know he knows the game. And I think just based off of that, he's going to have them ready to play. That being said, last year he didn't have a lot to work with through injuries, through being very, very young. So it wasn't really the best year, you know, that he's ever had. But moving to this particular year, based off what I'm hearing from him, based off what I'm hearing from, you know, some of the players, and based off what I'm hearing from other people that's not even connected with him about some of the players coming in, I think this is a team where I don't believe they're going to win the conference and I don't necessarily think they're going to be in the top two or three. But I do believe that they are going to be out. They are going to be a lot more competitive than what people believe. And as we alluded to before, they have that kid coming over from uh, Chatham Charter. They have a freshman coming in who's really, really good. They don't have as many injuries uh, this particular year. Uh, from what I've been uh, understanding, their practice have been extremely competitive. They bought in. So I'm actually expecting a new uh, version of Jordan Matthews from a competitive standpoint. Uh, and, and, and to be quite frank with you, I think they're going to at least double their win total, you know, from last year. Uh, so now I'm looking for big things out of uh, Jordan Matthews and uh, I'm rooting for those guys as well. But I, I, I agree with the, uh, the power rankings in this particular case as well. Yeah, and they, they got some guys coming back, and like Kelton Fuque, who was, who was one of the injured players last year. Um, he's going to be full strength this year. We talked to him on media day. You know, what do you like to see from him? And also guys like Neil Wiley, too, uh, Coach Wiley's. It, um, yeah, what, what do you like to see from those guys? I think the biggest thing with Jordan Matthews is the players in particular do not try to do it alone. If you look at the competition that these players want to go up against, they're not going to be able to go in there and take the bull by the horn and put the team on their back and just go and, and, and win the game by themselves. So they're going to have to selectively utilize their skill set based upon what the coach wants them to do in order to see success. Because I think the sure way to fall short, Jordan Matthews, because they're just not there yet from a across the board talent perspective, is to go out there and just try to do everything themselves. Listen to the coach run the sets, encourage everybody to play on like on a string. And if they can like hold each other accountable to play on the string, especially on the defense, right? Then I think the things that I've been saying to you before, as far as doubling the win, um, win total and being real competitive, I think they'll have that. They're still a fairly young team though. Isn't it? Yes. There are a lot of freshmen and sophomores last year. So most of them guys are going to be like sophomores and juniors still, still young, but do have a year under their belt. So, I do expect, like you said, I do expect them to come out and play a lot better than they did last yes, year. Yes, yes, yes. And then uh, last night, our power rankings list is Wood Charter. You know, um, you know, they had a very successful season last year, but they're still returning a lot of players from that roster. Um, and once again, we talk about the experience is huge for teams that are coming back, um, bouncing back off a tough season. So um, they got Caden Watson coming back, who averaged, I think, 9.9 .9 points from them um, last year. So, you know, what do you, what do you like, what are you seeing from Woods Charter and hearing about them coming into the season? Well, Wish Charter is another school that I absolutely love. I mean, that's where, you know, I cut my, my, my teeth at. Uh, with Kyle Bryant, the principal, we have Dina Floyd, she's the athletic director. And, um, you know, I'm going to give her a, a shout out as well, because one of the things that I'm really impressed with with regards to Dina Floyd was over the last two years, she had to uh, you know, make some coaching decisions. And what she basically did was she looked for qualified individuals from within. The first thing she did was hire uh, uh, Leonard McNair, which I absolutely adore. Loved this kid. Um, actually coached him back when he was in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. And she brought him in. She kept him in the house. Quality guy. Loves the game. Jim Rat uh, asked lots of questions. Very inquisitive. Uh, so I'm really happy that uh, she brought him in. And then the other person she brought in was Carmen Wood. And, again, this is another person who's been around the program for a very, very long time. She paid her dues, you know, coached the middle school uh, group went out and did a little bit of work at the college level, position opened up, then she got her opportunity to come in. And I'm expecting big things out of both of them, Leonard McNair as well as Carmen Wood. That being said, uh, if you look at uh, Wood's charter, uh, the biggest thing, the biggest impediment 
talk about the boys first. The biggest impediment with the boys is just keeping players there from middle school to high school. What's been happening is all of the really good players, they tend to go somewhere else, you know, when high school kicks in. Like they Mr. Go, Hobbs, for yeah, example. Griffin Hobbs is one. Drake Powell is another. Uh, Deuce Powell is another. And the list goes, uh, Max Frazier is another. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. If those players stay back and play for a guy like Leonard McMahon, then you know what? He would have a lot of success as well. But I'm telling you, they have a core group of players, very, very young, but I've seen them. Like Jester, last kid name is Jester. You have Amy Hankins, uh, a son. Uh, these guys are really good for their age. They just need experience, right, continue to develop. And I believe over the next couple of years, guess what? They're going to surprise some people as well, particularly in their conference. You know, I'm not going to put them – where Northwood is at this point or see because it's not a fair fight simply because if you look at Woods, they may have a couple hundred high school kids, yeah. right? You look at these other schools, they have hundreds, if not thousands of kids to pull from. But if Woods keep their players from middle to high school and the coaching staff is able to develop them, they stay with them long term, Woods is going to do some special things. And by the way, this year, you know, just looking at them in that conference, I think they're going to double or triple you know their win total just based off of some of the things i've already seen right now and by the way i talk to leonard all the time mm -hmm. coach mcnair and uh, you know he tells me coach listen i'm very optimistic about what we have here we have a lot of young players uh and if we stay together i think moving forward we're going to have something special and that's what i'm looking forward to with which charter the boys program in particular okay. All right, we're going to have to get ready to start talking about the yeah, girls. So is there girls. anything else you want to say before you go to the girls? Um, no, I think we covered. We went through the boys and covered a lot about them. Uh, Coach, anything else like this? Yeah. Um, going back to Seaford in particular, you know, my hope is definitely that they surprise some individuals. I'm certainly root for them, uh, the coaching staff, the players, uh, because I do believe with them being years older and having that experience, I do believe they do have the potential to shock some people. All right, hold on for a second. Why don't you guys have a sip of water and we'll get into the, the girls' portion because, folks, we're also recording this uh, separate from the live stream. And you you folks, I, I'm personally enjoying this. It's kind of like, uh, and I think we'll, if we keep doing this kind of stuff, you guys are going to be uh, a lot more uh, pushing information back and forth and maybe disagreeing every once in a while. Uh, I am also going to just point out you can pick up the paper. Uh, it's got the, the finish up. Oh, uh, before we start with girls, you got to uh, talk with Tyler Zeller. Yes, did get to talk to Tyler Zeller. Um, talk to him about uh, helping out at Northwood. He's been really low-key about it. He's been doing it for, well, this is going to be his third season, helping out at Northwood as an assistant. Um, really big for them. And uh, Coach Brown talked about it, you know, helping out with game plans, any tips on, on where to put players and how to make guys fit. So, you know he's really he's really a a big behind the scenes piece for them. Also mm -hmm. talked to Drake Powell about you know what what their conversations were like you know about UNC and on campus and now, although they don't talk much about UNC you know Tyler still gives him his props and he told he told uh, Drake Powell that he's better than he ever was. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think I think uh, that that would be a really that's always a big thing for Northwood is having Tyler Zeller um, in the locker room and helping those guys out in development. Yeah, and you can read that article in this week's Chatham News and Record. Okay, let's get into the girls. Coach, I need you to move a little bit closer to okay. Ashibo so we get you both in the picture here because okay. I'm not important because I just take pictures. You guys know the ins and outs of all the other stuff, or at least you can talk about it more eloquently than I can. All right, women's basketball in Chatham County. Let's go, Ashibo. Yeah, so go same thing. We're going to talk about just the, the beginning of the season here. We got – once, like we said, we got all the teams in the Mid Carolina 1A 2A conference um, from Chatham County playing against each other this year. So everyone's going to get a shot at Northwood, Seaforth as well. Um, Seaforth is coming off a, a state state title appearance. So just just coming in, you know, what are your general expectations of the season here in Chatham County for the girls' side? You know, this is going to get interesting. This is going to get very very interesting because, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when Seaforth played Northwood. A couple of years ago, 
Norfolk got the better of them. That was that championship, you know, that state level championship team. And this is when Seaford was relatively young. You have that same core group of girls on Seaford are still there. Northwood has a different set of girls. There's a couple of ones that's still there, like Scholar and, and Whitaker. They're still there, but most of them are gone. So now you have the same girls from Seaford. They're going to play a couple of girls from that championship team. The girls from the championship team with Northwood feels like they're still going to have the edge. In fact, I spoke to I, I spoke briefly with uh with, with Natalia uh the other day. I said, how are you guys doing? Yeah, we putting that work in, we're ready to go. So she's giving me every indication that it's going to be business as usual. But on the flip side, when you look at Seaforth, I know this team intimately. And I'll tell you this, they're extremely well coached by uh, Coach Bird, uh, great coaching staff. Uh, the girls have bought into the culture. They play together. They have a superstar in Gabby White. They have another girl named Katie Leonard. Uh, you have Peyton Collins. Uh, you have Hannah. Uh, you have all of these guys that's right there, ready to go. Brennan with confidence. They coming in already with all the stuff that they left off with from last year. And uh, if you look at what they've been doing, the teams, you know, when they play them, uh, they've been having a lot of success. So when they meet Northwood, that is going to be a game for the ages. And I can't wait to uh, to see it. So that's the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to. Wait, are you selling tickets again for that? Get your, ticket, <laughs> okay. get your tickets early for that one too. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. Now, when you start looking at uh, Jordan Matthews, I think, again, they're at this process where they're growing. You know, you know they're going to have to, you know, probably go through this particular year and build upon what they started last year and just get better, get better every day. And let's see what, let's see what this thing takes us. You look at Chatham uh, Central, Chatham Central has always been a gritty team. Uh, going back to uh, the other coach, Burke, uh, they're going to fight you tooth and nail. Historically, they'll try to press you if they can. They, have, they can play zone. They can play man. They're going to fight you. They rebound. They well drill. And with the new coach, um, I heard uh, what she was talking about at the press conference, and she's a very fiery lady. Yeah. And it looks like uh, somebody didn't give her the memo that, wait a minute, you know, some of these other teams – have aspirations as well. Yeah. <laughs> so when she plays other teams, uh, I'm looking forward to that as well because I want to see, you know, how it all plays out when she plays a Northwood, when she plays a Seaford, uh, in particular those two, and that's going to kind of give you a, a lot, a lot of information. But keep in mind, even though they're in uh, this conference, they're still going to end up playing right when they get to the state in a slightly different, you know, uh, in a slightly different group, right? Because they're a smaller school. So they could end up coming out of this in a very uh, in a very good way because if they used to play in higher competition and then they go back and play 1A teams, you know, then it could really, really bode well for them and they can have another really decent run uh, moving forward. As far as Woods Charter, again, this is a sleeper because this is a team where on in, in any given year, you know, they can surprise you. Haven't really seen them play this particular year, but what I will tell you is this. I do know one of the players, Carolyn Mitchell. Uh, I know she's a senior. I know her in particular because she's the same age as my daughter. They were really close friends at one point, and I know that she was a basketball junkie. And I know going into this particular year, I know a lot of the ways we put on the shoulders to see if she can lead the team to uh, greener pastures than what they were in the prior year. So, again, uh, I, I, I like where they're at right now. Let's see what uh, Coach Wood can do with them. And when you look at um, when you look at Chatham uh, 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 Charter, I know uh, Coach, uh, you know Jeffrey. I know him in particular. He took over this program a couple of years ago. Had a very very deep run, uh, state runner ups, and um, I believe that they have to be the odds on favorite at least in their conference to uh, repeating. Uh, winning the conference championship and maybe having another deep one, you know, in the uh, in the state playoffs. So in general, you look at these uh, these Chatham County girls programs. Uh, it's going to be interesting. The inter most interesting matchup to me is going to be Northwood versus Seaforth. I'm also interested in seeing Chatham Central play both of those teams as well. Jordan Matthews, I still think they're going to come up. Uh, you look at um, you look at Chatham Chatham uh, uh, Charter. And you look at Woods Charter, you would probably have to give them an edge on Woods, but you know those are interesting uh, matchups as well. 
Yeah. And so that leads me right into my preseason power rankings for the girls' side. So what I had going on is, number one, of course, we just talked about C4. You know, they got a superstar like uh, Coach Barry said and Gabby White. They have a deep team. I expect them to to, to repeat as another team that, that can make a good run to the state to state title again this year. Um, number two, I got Chad and Charter, um, another team, you know, that, that made a deep run to the playoffs and, and got a state title appearance as well. Number three, I got Northwood coming in at that spot. And then number four, Chatham Central. Number five, Woods Charter. And number six, Jordan Matthews. So uh, let's go ahead and get into some uh, in-depth look at each of these teams, starting with Seaforth. Now, we already talked a little bit about Gabby White, um, Katie Leonard, uh, those those girls. What are you seeing from Coach Bird? You know, Coach Bird, you know, he's a young coach. He's You know him uh, as well from uh, youth football basketball. Uh, so – what do, you, what do you like and see from C4 girls this year? Well, Coach uh, Charles Bird is an exceptional coach. Um, he may be young, but he's wise beyond his years. He has a wisdom about himself, which even though he may be in his early 30s, he's probably equivalent to 40, 45. Um, one thing that makes him special is his ability um, you know, to ask lots of questions and get information from people who he deems may know a little bit more than him. Um, and I love his philosophy in terms of um, we all have to play together. He's humble. Uh, he gets the girls to buy in. There's no nonsense at his practices. And I think that's where everything starts and ends right there with Coach Bird. Um, as far as um, the – what was the question about the team? Yeah, oh, yeah. Just what what, what are you liking about what you're expecting from yeah. them? Uh, you know, because, yeah, you've been around them. So, yeah, I mean, I just think – you know, they just had a state playoff run where they were state runner-ups. Mm-hmm. You have the entire team coming back. In fact, they've added a few more pieces to it, including this year we have a JV program. And I just think those girls are just brimming with confidence. And I just believe anybody uh, playing them is going to be a very hard out to, to beat C4 this year. I just That's what I really believe. They can't really plan for any, any opponents, can't really plan anything specific because if they go after Gabby, Got the three point shooters from the corners. If they try to shut down the three point shooter, I mean, I've seen Gabby is quick, man. She can outrun a lot of other players. Yeah, Gabby is the real deal. I mean, this this is this 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 is a uh, a college uh, player in the making. I mean, she's had several uh, colleges come by to check her out. She has all kinds of interests. Uh, she she's she she's a monster and. Uh, you know, she's physical, she's competitive, um, she has that competitive drive, uh, she's athletic, she's been working on a jumper, she can drive, her defense is stellar. You try to make cross passes in that 23 match defense they plan, she's gonna pick it, she can outlet the ball. I mean, she's is, she is a major problem. But as you said before, if you try to gain up on her, then you got Katie Leonard, yeah. who can also hurt you really, really bad. And then you start looking at the shooters. And some of the more experienced players, like the Paint Collins or like the uh, the Hannah the Daju, you you bring them into the picture. Um, listen, it's going to be a problem. Then you have Sydney, who is who is the center. She comes, and you have Jossie. She's another one. There's right there, her and Sydney, like A B B A. However you want to look at them. You have me. The team is absolutely loaded, and they all play as a group. They all play on the string. They all know what they're supposed to do. Whoever they play, it's going to be a problem. They were beating teams that were just destroying people all last year in the playoffs mm-hmm. at the end of gym. So I, I, I have, um, you know, as long as the teams stay focused, they get 1% better every single day. Uh, don't look too far ahead. Just focus on the task at hand in front of you. I actually, I really believe that uh, this is going to be the team to beat. Um, now, with regards to your uh, second pick with Chatham Charter, Mm-hmm. That one is a little tricky to me, right? Mm-hmm. Because as good as Chatham Charter has been over the last couple of years, uh, I think Northwood girls, you have to respect them. You have to respect them. You got Skylar Adams, you got uh, Natalia Whitaker on that team. They had a couple of girls come over that used to play in really, really tough competition. If you put them on the court together, uh, I think it will be very hard to uh, go against Northwood against uh, Chatham Charter. It would be a good game, but if someone told me I had to pick one, 
right now, just because of the level of competition, they was a 318 last year. Right. Right. You have a lot of those girls coming back who played against that competition. Mm -hmm. Chad and Charter was a 1A. They got it, it's different levels. Right. And I just think it's going to be a. So, so you're saying instead of Chad and Charter, number two, put Northwood. What are you going to tell him about that? Tell him why he's wrong. Well, no, he knows no, he's, he knows more than me. I, I'm talking to Coach Barry for more more knowledge on my end. Oh, all right, all right. I'm, I'm new. You know, I, I'm so the first ne next week you may change this power. Yeah, ranking. yeah. It's, all it's, right, it's all right. Fluid. It's fluid. And, and it's that's the fun part yeah, about yeah, yeah. power ranking. Yeah, it's yeah. going yeah. to change every week, or depending mm -hmm. on how the season goes, it might not change. We'll mm -hmm. see. But um, yeah, I, I really like what you said about Northwood. Um, like I, Natalia, speaking of Natalia, um, Skyler, they're really they're really focused on you know coming together, playing together, and really taking that next step this year. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that was their big thing at, at Media Day. So I think Skyler also plays sort of like Gabby. They don't actually have the same style, but she's quick. Yes. She can get in between. I've seen her go in between two opponents and lay it up, and it's kind of like, okay, I just did my job. Let me get back on defense. Right. And, 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 right. and this is why that matchup between Northwood and Seaford is going to be very, very interesting because – 80 to 90 percent of the teams, they don't have anybody that can match Gabby. Her athleticism, her talent, her skill, her ferociousness, all together can't match it. But Skylar Adams, she's a different animal. In fact, when when, when they played in that championship game, they or that championship run that they had, they always designated Skylar Adams as one of their defensive stoppers. This was two, three years ago. Now that you come up now. No, she she's she is more than up for the challenge to uh, try to go ahead and guard uh, Gabby. We'll see where that goes. And she's improved her game over the summer too. Yeah, yeah. And another thing too that makes this interesting is Scholar and Gabby played together, so they they was on the come up together. So they used to plan against each other. So the athleticism and the physical nature of how Gabby plays, it's not necessarily going to surprise Scholar. So when those two get together, it's going to be very very interesting. Then that's when Katie comes in. So then who's going to match her? It's Natalia. That's an interesting matchup because Natalia's a little bit shorter than Katie. Katie is probably close to six feet right now. And uh, Katie is extremely smart, uh, a multi sport athlete. She is like all state, you know, just with, with the track, yeah, with the soccer, mm -hmm. as well as the basketball. So she's, uh, in fact, I, you know, Katie Leonard is another one. I, I didn't speak on her. But she's another one that I have very, very deep ties with. I used to train and work with Katie Leonard from the time she was in third grade all the way up to eighth grade. In fact, I'm proud to say the very first team, like travel type team that she never played was the AAU team that we kind of put together we took up to NC State. And she was on that team as a fifth, sixth grader playing against ninth graders. This was Katie Leonard. And was the most aggressive, most tenacious, just doggy player we had on that particular team. So Katie is an absolute rock star. And, um, you know, you pair her up with, against, like, just a superstar like a Gabby, like a Gabby White, they're going to be very, very difficult to beat if they're playing together as a unit, as a team, and they're all on the same page. Yeah, so we're talking about C4, Chatham Charter, and Northwood. Now let's get into Chatham Central. Now we were just talking about them. And uh, Coach Adrian Albright, she's coming in. She's a new head coach there for the Bears. And at media day, that was a, the key word there was confidence, right? And she was instilling them, like, hey, we're going to be confident. We're going to go out there. And the players believe that they can beat anybody. That's, mm -hmm. That is their mentality this season. Um, also, Coach Albright, very, she really emphasizes fundamental basketball because she knows she doesn't have the tallest, most athletic team. So they're going to try to be fast. They're going to be fundamental mm -hmm. and try to limit their mistakes. So what, what are you expecting out of the Bears this year? Um, you know, with this particular team, it's one of those wait and see type scenarios. If you base it off the past history, you know they're going to have the grit. They're going to try. They're going to work hard. You look at the coach. Typically, the team is an image of their coach. And this is a coach that looks like she's not going to take a backseat to no one. She's going to put the, you know, she's going to go out there and really, really, you know, try. Um, she's going to really go out there and try to get her team ready and to compete. She's going to demand it of them. And she has big expectations. But relative to these power rankings, um, yeah, I agree with this 100%. I think that's exactly where they're going to fall. I think they're probably going to have a little bit more to work with than the Woods. And then from a Jordan Matthews perspective, I think it's the same exact thing. I think they fall right here in that fourth spot. 
but I do expect them to be gritty, competitive, work hard, and um, you know they may they may end up winning a couple of games that people didn't expect them to win. But from a coaching standpoint, I think her I think the coach is a fiery person trying to really mold this team in her image so they can give her that type of effort once they get out. Yeah, and, and talk about I, I know Catherine Gaines, she's a senior, been there for a while. You've seen her and competed against her where you were at C4. So what do you like to see from their players, specifically Gaines and some of the other uh girls that got coming in? This is on on um, Channel Central. Channel Central. Yeah. Uh you know, again, it's it's hard right now because I don't know what sets they're gonna run. If it was Burke, then I could give you like some insight on it. But what I will tell you is this. Uh, they have to be careful with the style of play that they play. If they come at, if they just run right at these teams and try to overwhelm them with pressure and pressing and being more gritty and just like selling out sort of like just throwing haymakers at them, right? It's hard to win when you play against another team who can throw bigger haymakers and bigger and stronger and faster. That's what they typically would do in the, in the past. So what I would suggest is, again, um, find out what their strengths are, um, find out what their strengths are, and try to figure out the best way to utilize those strengths against these other teams for their success. Um, we know that they're short. We know that they may not be the fastest team, so they may want to play a slower style, slower paced game, right, to, 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 to shorten the game up, to keep the scores down, right, to keep the score down. And I think if they did that, I think they hold a much better chance of uh, seeing success, especially against some of these other Chatham County teams. All right. And then next we got Wood Charter right there in the fifth spot. So, and we talked about Carolyn Mitchell. She had 15.1 points averaging that last season per game. So uh, she's really like the standout player for them. But like we said, you know, it's a lot of pressure on her shoulders to kind of get them in the right direction. So what do you kind of see from Woods this year that, that might be different from last year and helping out uh, Caroline and, 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 and getting more success this year? The biggest thing that I want to see Woods do is I want them to build, I want them to put the, the groundwork in, put the foundation in, you know, get better every day, build something for the long haul. Don't expect anything to happen like today. If you put in a little bit of work every single day, you do it every every day of the season, and you build in the off season, you go into next season, the final season. I think ultimately, in the long term, you're going to have something special. I know you have a, a, a coach who's absolutely dedicated to the long term success of the program. She's been a lifer um, at Woods Charter, and I think she's a great addition uh, to the staff. Yeah, and. Then we can get into. I know we're about running out of time there, but we, we can get into Jordan Matthews. Uh, they're there in my last spot. Uh, Coach Lamont Piggy is coming in for another year, and he's got a senior Leah Carter. Uh, he also has a pretty young team as well. And talking to them at Media Day, you know, their their emphasis this season is getting their connection together and playing together, um, like like a lot of other teams. But that's really the thing they're trying to focus on as well as defense. But they also got a freshman in Jada Scott. I saw, you know, she's got size. Um, and, and Coach, Coach Piggy's got her representing the team at Media Day, so I'm sure he believes in her as well. What are you expecting out of the Jets this year, and how do you how do you see them kind of bouncing back off of that after last year? You know, I think it's similar to what I just said with Woods. Mm -hmm. This is a group that I think ultimately um, the game plan has got to be you have to take the girls that come to Jordan Matthews and really try to implement a program long term where you can develop them. And you can and you can ultimately have a field a, a great team, a good team. I think one of the key issues with uh, Jordan Matthews is they've lost uh, some players, you know, the Chatham, the Chatham Charter, right? And if some of those players came over to Jordan Matthews, and I think they're a little bit different. That being said, that doesn't mean you can't do anything. You just have to take the player that you got, hopefully get them to buy into part of the culture is we have to really work at this, maybe year round, hit the weight room you know, work on our skill, work out on your own, you know, get other girls to, to chime in. And over time, I think you can turn this thing around, which is something similar to what we've done at Woods Charter, you know, over the years, because Woods Charter is that kind of school where anyone just can't come to the school. You have to put your name in the hat, get, get accepted, be at a lottery. So you have to work with what was there. So that being said, you have to almost have a year-round program to develop these players because they're not just going to come in from the street. And then that's what's going to give you the best chance of, uh, of success. So as far as expectations, I just want these guys to be competitive. 
I want them to believe in themselves. I want to see improvement, you know, in um, the players that's out there, you know, buy into what the coach is trying to uh, instill. And I think if they do that, this is the beginnings of putting that foundation in for the future. Yeah. All right. We're, we can wrap it up. We're getting close to the end of the hour. I do want to thank Caldwell Banker, Howard Perry, and Walston for allowing us to use their facilities. Um, they've been really great about this, and their connection here in the community is uh, fantastic. And we're down in the Pittsburgh office. Uh, Let's finish up with your thoughts. Uh, who do you see finishing at over 500 or under 500 for the season or anything else you want to add to this discussion? You want to start a Sheba? Yeah. So um, pretty much going off my power rankings and what I, when I kind of tested out from each team there are media days and in the preseason, um, definitely we know C4 is going to be, will, will probably be the best team for the girls side as well. And for mm -hmm. the boys side, Northwood, um, and I'm really excited, like you said, to see what Chatham Central does on both sides. As far as the boys, they're, they're the sleeper team we talked about. And for the girls, they have a new coach, um, and, and she's coming in. She's 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 kind of changing things around as far as fundamentals and the approach to the game for, for, for that program. So I, I, I expect um, a lot, probably about four teams on the girls' side, uh, the top four teams to go over 500 here, and then the bottom two um, – well, we'll see how they how those teams shake out, but for the boys' side as well, I can see, I can see, of course, Northwood, Seaforth, Chatham Charter, Chatham Central, of course, having winning seasons and, and getting into the playoffs. It will just be those last two, Jordan Matthews and Woods Charter, that we'll we'll, we'll hope will surprise us this year. So, what are your thoughts, Coach Bear? Yeah, I mean, this is interesting here. Um, the definition of Northwood, Chatham Charter, Seaforth, Chatham Central. This is on the boys' side. The sleepers, the ones that's a little bit, you know, unsure is the Jordan Matthews and the Woods Charter. Um, but I do think it's a possibility that both of those teams could end up. Um, being 500, I'm talking about the overall schedule. I'm not talking about the conference. I'm talking about the overall schedule. So I think there is a possibility that that could certainly happen. As far as the girls, definitely Seaford, definitely Chatham Charter, Northwood, Chatham Central, and it actually plays out the same exact way. Uh, which Charter, uh, I'm not 100% sure with that one, nor am I with Jordan Matthews for the reason that I just stated before, right? They're in a rebuilding type situation, young team. Um, you know, young team depends on what the competition brings. But I do believe the first four teams for sure will be 500. But there is a possibility that Wish Charter uh, can do it as well as Jordan Matthews. All right. Uh, anything else you gentlemen would like to add? I mean, I'm going to give one more plug again for Caldwell Banker, Howard Perry, and Washington down here in Pittsburgh. I personally enjoyed this conversation. It's good to hear Rashibo and Coach Barry. Uh, Coach Barry's been here for a while, done youth hoops. Uh, Ashibo's new to his. Uh, this is uh, you've been what three months, four months? Three months uh, it's August. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's catching on really well. Actually, the uh, Northwood girls coach had mentioned that if you cover basketball as well as you did football, that everybody in the county will be happy. So, oh, um, I will go ahead and give folks your. Um, Twitter account, because I will, as I always mention, Ashibo is doing things differently than the earlier um, sports writer was out there. He's got a Twitter account. He's out there and he's tweeting or Xing. I don't know what we call it these days during the activities, as well as taking pictures and throwing in some videos. Yeah. So you can find me on Twitter at Ashibo R38 is capital A, A S H E E B O capital R and then 38. And then on there, like, like Gene said, I'm at the games. Uh, the games I choose to go to, I'll be live. Uh, well, not live streaming, but I'll be getting clips of uh, big moments from the game. Also, keeping up with stats for basketball is a little different. Can't can't just wait for the end of like football for touchdowns. So I'll be keeping up with stats and uh, give you halftime updates and things like that. Also, if I can, giving you uh, scores from around the county on a specific night. So keeping you guys updated all on Twitter as well as uh, coach and player interviews at the end. So giving you full coverage of each game I'm at. All right, Coach Barry, one thing I will say about Coach Barry, Coach Barry helped us out last year when I was shooting video because basically when I was doing it, it was kind of like, okay, there goes number four. 
she scored three points and she coming back on defense or there goes Skylar. I mean, you get to the point where you do know all the players, but um, when you listen to the videos with coach Barry and he's actually gone ahead and, and gotten a new wireless DGI setup. So it's even going to be better this year. Um, Cause last year, some people were freaking out going, this guy's standing next to me. He's talking to himself. <laughs> it's true. There were actually several people. Um, we're going to continue that tradition this year, but why don't you tell people uh, about your youth, youth hoops and where they can find you on the web? I'm Coach John Berry. I'm the founder and director of Youth Hoops Basketball Camps at youthhoops.com, Y-O-U-T-H-H-O-O-P-S.com. We actually offer uh, fundamentals basketball skill development for kids between the age of 6 and 16 years old. So if, obviously, you know someone who wants to be better at basketball, you can certainly do that. If you want more information on me personally, simply go to coachberry.com. That's C O A C H B as in boy E R R Y dot com. And you'll be able to contact me there. You can read all kinds of information on me there. And uh, if you have any comments or anything that I've said, certainly reach out to me. Thank you, Jamie. All right. I want to wrap this up, folks. I uh, just want to let you know Shibo and I have been doing the weekly Chatham NC Sports Roundup. Appreciate it. We've, we've gotten over 300 views this past week. So that continues to grow. If you like what we're doing here with these two gentlemen, let us know and we'll do more of this in the future. Um, just watching what I'm watching on the side here because it's primarily these two smart guys. Um, I know that there are improvements that we can make for the show itself, but hey, stay tuned. The other thing too is we always get more viewers watching this after the live stream than during the live stream. If you find this interesting, share it with other folks. And the other thing too is... Uh, you don't have to watch us. I mean, these guys are kind of handsome, but you don't have to watch us. Put, just put on the sound and listen to it. And I will say this live stream is going out on both Facebook on the Chatham Journal site. It's also going on to our YouTube channel. And I just checked while these gentlemen were talking. It also goes out onto Twitter. So look, you really have not a reason to, to not be able to find us. And as Shibo mentioned, he's out on Twitter. And we're going to wrap that up. Let me hit the end screen. Thank you so much for watching.